What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how I set up my Kratky hydroponic system. So this is our preferred method of growing in hydroponics and a lot of people will say, oh, you're crazy to grow in Kratky. You know, you have to have the bubblers. You have to have the, the, the deep containers and all the probes and meters. It's the only way to grow. And to be truthfully honest, that's just not the case. I have had great success with the Krat Key method. A lot of other people have had great success with the Krat Key method. And I'm gonna, I'm kinda gonna share with you my experiences as well as some of the, the benefits to growing with the Krat Key method. So, to give you some context, there's a lot of new people to this channel that probably have never heard of this Krat Key method, whatever that is. Um, and, you know, what is it? What makes it so special? Why are we talking about it? Well, when you're growing in hydroponics, there are two different methods. There's what's called an aerated method. This is an, like an actively aerobic method where you have to aerate the water so that the roots can have oxygen and it allows the plants to not only take up oxygen but also growing uh, nutrients and water. Um, so that's an aerated system. Then you have what's called a static system. A static system is basically, as the name implies, it's just, it's just there. It doesn't move, it doesn't do anything, it's static. And that's what I really love about that, this type of system is it's just kind of a set it and forget it system. It's really great for that. So if you're someone that travels a lot or you know, if, you, uh, if you don't like all these complicated moving parts, this is gonna give you uh, the results that you're looking for uh, to a certain extent. We'll get into some of those things in a second. So uh, you don't need the bubblers, which sounds crazy, but you don't need the bubblers. You don't need um, like all the different probes and, and, and meters and testing stuff. You just don't need it. And that's because you put all the food in here, all of the growing solution in here. It's enough food to last the plant its entire life. And you put the plant in as a seedling, which we have over here, they're growing. And you put the seedling in, and as the water drops, you see what happens naturally is when the water drops, the, uh, the, the roots that are exposed to the air form what's called aerial roots. So you have the water that drops, the plants form aerial roots, and then as the roots continue to grow down through the growing solution, they are called feeder roots. And those feeder roots find water and nutrients. That's what helps feed the plant. And then the aerial roots give it the oxygen that it needs. Without any oxygen, you have a lot of bacteria and fungi that will feed on your plants. And that's where you have something called damping off. That's where it'll actually rot out the stem and it'll fall flat. So the reason why it doesn't do that is because as the water drops, it forms new feeder roots. And all of the old feeder roots and all the old root system becomes aerial roots. And that those aerial roots, they don't rot and mold because there's no water there. And so it gives the plant both of what it needs without all the bubblers and, and all that you know really complicated stuff that a lot of people get overwhelmed by. And I love that. So what are the limitations? I mean, it sounds great, right? What are the limitations? Well, what I have found is that the limitations are the size of the container. If you're going to be going, if you're going to be growing something that has a huge root system, you need a huge container. Because obviously, this, this container here needs to be able to hold the entire root system that can support that plant. So things like peppers and tomatoes, I've seen work, but you need a giant container for that. And then also things that take a really long time. You know, if you're growing things like peppers and tomatoes, again, stuff that takes 80 to 100 days, the amount of water in this container will be well gone in 80 to 100 days in this size container. So you need a bigger container for that as well. And so uh, I find things that mature very quickly and grow very fast typically do far better in the crap key system. Again, not to say I haven't seen good results, it's just I've seen great results with stuff that is fast turnaround crops like lettuce or leafy herbs like basil, um, parsley, stuff like that does really great. Uh, even stuff like kale does wonderful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring you in close, I'm gonna show you the systems uh, that I have, what I use, and I'm also gonna show you the, uh, the, the grow solution that I use because it's super simple, but uh, you wanna follow it to a T, otherwise you're gonna have some issues. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through everything you're gonna need to get the crack key system set up. What we have here is our tubs. Now these are uh, six gallon tubs, and I think this is something like a 17 gallon tub or something like that. And basically they just allow you to grow a few more plants in a given space. Then we also have here, these are net cups. Really love these. These are almost essential to growing hydroponically because they set in the hole of the bucket and that prevents the plant from falling into the grow solution because the hole is slightly smaller than the diameter of the net cup. These here are two inch net cups. 
so they set into the hole and they don't fall through. Like I said, almost essential. Then you have here your grow solution. So this right here is completely whited out. All right, so this is calcium nitrate and calcium nitrate is basically just a calcium source and a nitrogen source. Essentially, that's how you can look at it. It gives you both calcium and nitrogen. Both are very important components to plant growth. Calcium uh, helps with uh, the cell structure of the leaf and then the nitrogen helps with the leaf growth itself. So you really get both and it provides a lot of it. So th this is about 15% uh, available nitrogen and then it's got about 19% available calcium. So really important to have this. And then you have what's called the master blend. Now the master blend is kind of the industry standard for Kratky style growing because this has uh, both N, P, and K, but it has uh, also trace minerals. So you can see there, gives you that. And as you can tell, you're gonna mix the two together and that way you're going to have, uh, you're going to basically give the, you're gonna give the master blend mix some nitrogen and you're going to give the calcium nitrate some phosphorus, potassium, and trace minerals. Therefore, you have a more well-balanced mix. And then because uh, this system right here, this system typically tends to run a little bit alkaline. The pH is not quite uh, low enough. Basically the acidity is not there. You need to add some magnesium sulfate. This is gonna give your plants both magnesium and sulfur. Sulfur is another very important component to plant growth because what it does is it lowers the pH. It makes the environment more acidic. And if the environment is more acidic, it allows the plants to uptake more nutrients. So you need, the, you need the sulfur, but it also gives you magnesium, which is very important. It's another mineral, uh, another uh, you know, very important mineral in plant growth because it aids in, uh, in nitrogen uptake as well as leaf growth. So it kind of aids the calcium nitrate and they work in tandem. So this whole system right here is a very synergistic approach. They all kind of help each other to make it more of a one-stop uh, solution. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add I always use a five gallon measurement because these bins here are roughly five gallons and 15 gallons, so it makes it easier for me. But you can, uh, you can increase the ratio or, uh, or you can increase the amount or decrease the amount based on how much water you're using. All right, so here's what makes this system so simple. You don't need to know any crazy math to make this happen. You just need a one to one to 0.5 ratio. Now, the amount that I'm going to use is for a five gallon bucket. So if you use one gallon, you're going to divide how much I'm telling you by five. If you're using 10 gallons, multiply it by two. The amount of nutrients is a one to one to 0.5, very simple. So this right here is the calcium nitrate. I'm going to use two tablespoons in a five gallon bucket. So I have two tablespoons of the calcium nitrate and that means I'm going to use two tablespoons of the master blend. In goes two tablespoons of the master blend. And then because we have two tablespoons and two tablespoons, we only need one tablespoon of the Epsom salt. One tablespoon goes in and you're done. Now just add your water and mix it up until, the, until all of the uh, granules become dissolved. All right, and the final thing that you have to do is just add the grow solution to your system. I prefer to do this right where I'm gonna be growing my plants. That way I don't risk walking throughout the whole house, sloshing everything around and spilling stuff as I go. So I'm just gonna put that right there. When you put your net cup into the hole, you don't want water to be riding up the net cup. You don't want a bunch of water riding up the net cup because that means that your plants are gonna be sogged. You want them to just be touching the, you want the net cups to just be touching the top of the water. And that way the roots are actually gonna be encouraged to go into the grow solution rather than the grow solution just saturating, uh, saturating where the plants are. All right, and the final thing you have to do is just add the plant to the net cup and then add that into your system. So what I've done here is I've just gone, I've kind of shaved off some of the edges so it's circular because they come square and as you can see, the two inch rock wool cubes don't quite fit into the two inch net cup. They kind of just don't really work. 
So what you want to do is you want to just take off some of the corners, make it round, and be careful not to rip any roots. If you have any root development, just kind of be careful about that, but just take off the corners. I'll show you what to do with this excess later, but now it's going to fit right into the bottom of the net cup just perfectly. And then just kind of push it down so it makes good contact. And that way, as soon as it touches, uh, as soon as you set this into your system, it's going to touch the grow solution and it's going to start uptaking nutrients right away. Next one here, just slip that in. Now I'll show you what to do with the excess. So a lot of people don't know what to do with this and I don't like throwing it out because it's fairly expensive. So for my bigger seeds, you have uh, stuff like this, which if you have not seen our Petri dish method of seed germination, I'd recommend checking it out. Um, but you have big seeds like this, which is our summer squash. And there's really no good way to go about putting this plant into the system. So what I'll do is I'll use the rock wool as basically filler. It gives the plant kind of some support, helps the plant uh, stand up tall there, but it also um, just gives the, well, the rock wool absorbs the grow solution. So it gives the roots a chance to absorb some of that. And I just kind of pack that around there. And that way I can still reuse the rock wool and, uh, and the plant can grow happily even though you didn't start it in the rock wool. So there you go. It is that simple to grow hydroponically with the Kratky method. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I really do hope that if you have any questions, you'll ask them in the comments box below. I'd be happy to answer them. I know one of the biggest questions that's going to come up is on the lights. So we'll have a whole different video on our lighting setup, but just know that lighting is important if you're going to be growing indoors because their plants, they need something as near as powerful as the sun and you can't grow them with just regular house lights. You need either LEDs or compact fluorescents that are going to uh, give your plants good growable light or a very good strong south facing window. It's going to have a lot of sun exposure. And then the final question is on the water. Does the water really matter if it's uh, you know reverse osmosis or filtered or uh, just regular city tap water or what if I melted snow or rainwater? Honestly, it does not matter. In my opinion, because we're growing inorganically already, now I prefer to grow organic if possible, but these are these right here are not organic. Um, the Epsom salt is, but like the calcium nitrate and, and stuff like that is not organic. So to use something like you know, filtered water or to really worry about uh, you know, the, um, uh, the chlorine and chloramine in your water, that's not going to affect anything because in the garden we worry about that because it can kill beneficial bacteria and fungi. But in this system here, you're not growing with beneficial bacteria and fungi. There's no ecosystem. You're giving your plants the nutrients that they need to uptake right away in a plant available form without all the beneficial bacteria and fungi. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to make sure to subscribe if you're not yet already. I'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya. Bye.